This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Another week, another viewer recommendation. Actually, a, a lot of you all really wanted me to check this one out. Well, let's see what we got. Oh my god! These designs! Ugh. Oh my, well that one's not so, oh my god! They're awful! What's wrong with her face? They're like animated caricatures from hell! This is Goat Story. The Old Prague Legends. Released in 2008, this movie was the first feature-length computer-animated film produced in the Czech Republic. And it was a big deal for them. It even broke records in the country. And a portion of the film's story is actually based on Czech folklore. I is it Czech? Is that how you say it? Czech? <laughs> Let me check. <laughs> Also, this movie was like animated by 10 or so people over the course of 5 years. So it's safe to say that Goat Story is the result of some very passionate and dedicated artist. And you know what? I respect that. But what about the movie itself? Is it any good? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, this movie's like Sir Billy, but uglier. And that's really saying something. No, don't get me wrong. I can dig character designs that are uncanny or strange or even downright ugly. But they need a good story and character development to back them up. And do we get that with Goat Story? Is there possibly a fantastic film behind that ugly face? <laughs> ah, let's find out. Oh my god, I should not have drank. So who are the people behind this film? Well, the main studio that created Goat Story was Art and Animation Studio. <laughs> you gotta respect how direct that studio's name is. It's like, we're baking bread bakery. You know what it is. Art and Animation Studio is located in the Czech Republic. And from what I could gather, they've only made two movies. Goat Story, their first film, launched production back in October of 2001 and was written, produced, and directed by Jane Tomanik. <laughs> oh my god, Czech names are Czechoslovakian? Is it even Slovakian at this point? I don't even know. Forgive me, I am the ignorant, stupid American, I apologize. But uh, your guys' names, like Czech names in particular, are very hard to say. Jan Tomanik. I'm gonna call you Jan from now on. Well, with a small team and an even smaller budget, Jan here set out to create the first feature-length computer animated film from the Czech Republic. Real talk, I couldn't find much about this film as far as sources go. But I was fortunate enough to have a few Czech viewers email me about their experiences with the movie. One viewer said that Goat Story was initially very hyped up and well received in the Czech Republic, but that it would go on to get some negative reviews from local critics. And that Goat Story currently has a 39% on the Czech version of IMDb. Today I learned there's a Czech version of IMDb. The email also mentioned that the movie was advertised as a kid's movie in the Czech Republic, even though it features sex and alcohol. Something that, according to this Czech citizen, and I paraphrase, the themes of sex and alcohol are in almost every Czech animated movie, as it is a big part of our culture. <laughs> I love that. Imagine if sex and alcohol were present in every American animated feature. L like, like the Lion King. Nala! 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 Where's Pumba? I want to eat him. I'm going to eat you later, if you know what I mean. <laughs> We're going to make the Lion King too, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but real talk, that's really interesting about the demographic stuff though. When I first saw Goat Story, I thought it was intended for an adult audience. But to check people, it's for kids too! That really goes to show you how different cultures can be. Like, for real, there is no way in hell this movie would be allowed for a kid audience in America. 
No boobs allowed, all right? You put those away. Guns are cool though, go ahead, that's fine. You can bring guns, just no titties. I had another Czech viewer mention the following. Quote, I see you finally stumbled upon this obscure movie from my country. First of all, I'm not here to complain about you trash talking our national treasure or whatever. In fact, as a Czech, I can confirm that the majority of people here did not like this movie at all. To get a little background for this, during 2009, this movie was advertised as first Czech 3D animated film ever. Which for that time, pretty much was, because genres like stop motion and classic drawn animation were more of our thing as animators. Back then, announcing something like this was, at least for us Czechs, something completely new and revolutionary in a way. But yeah, as you could guess, what seemed like a new and revolutionary thing in 2009 is kind of average and a bit garbage today." End quote. First off, shout out to the Czech viewers who sent me those emails. You guys are awesome, thank you so much. I always appreciate getting perspectives from people from the countries these movies and shows I review come from. They give me a point of view I could never really see for myself as an American. Also, in one of my emails, I was told that quite the list of Czech celebrities voice characters in Goat Story. But I gotta be honest, I watched the dub instead. Which might have been a bad idea. But who cares? The movie was released in 2008, and it became the highest grossing animated film in the country, making around 1.3 million US dollars. Which is $500,000 short of making back its original budget. <laughs> so I don't know why they're celebrating. So can we really call Goat Story a success? I tried to find out if there was any international release. If the numbers were made up on an international scale. But I couldn't find anything. So I'm kind of stumped on that. Yes, it was the highest grossing animated film in the Czech Republic, but still, that comes at a cost as far as I know. Goat Story did get a few film festival awards though, and it also found its way onto Amazon Prime. But let's be real, that's not too impressive. <laughs> I've seen what's on Prime, and let's just say that its reputation precedes no, itself. No, no, no. <laughs> Like, if you want to watch trashy movies and shows, you go to Amazon Prime. But to be fair, Goat Story wasn't just on Prime. It was also on YouTube. Wow. Which is kind of weird because there's adult stuff in the movie, and yet it's allowed on this website. A website that will give me demonetization if I say the S word in the first 15 seconds in my own video. So, okay, sure, YouTube, whatever. Play favorites. I can see where you're coming from. Thanks a lot. You, you obviously prefer Goat Story over my own YouTube channel. <laughs> whatever, just whatever, whatever. It's time to take a closer look at Goat Story. Okay, so what's the movie about? Well, it takes place in the Czech city of Prague during the 14th century. I looked it up, and I'm pretty sure this era is around the same time when European countries were transitioning from the Dark Ages to the Renaissance. Though, don't quote me on that, I am the stupid. I'll tell you this though, these characters definitely look like they're from the Dark Ages, because woof, these designs, they are some kind of ugly. So extreme and uncanny to look at. We'll double back on the character designs here in a bit. Let's focus on the story for now. The main character in the English dub goes by the name of Jimmy. He and his goat companion, named Goat, arrive in Prague and join in to help in the construction of the Charles Bridge, which, by the way, is an actual landmark. There's even another landmark in this movie that's an important plot device. The Astronomical Clock. Guys, isn't that gorgeous? I had no idea this was an actual thing. 
And I gotta admit, the movie does a pretty good job of recreating it. Right down to the skeleton too. <laughs> we then meet another main character, Matthew. He's a nerdy student who gets bullied, but wants to fit in with the cool kids. After that, we meet, uh, um, girl. <laughs> I honestly forget her name, which goes to show you how memorable her character is. How memorable her character is. But let's be real here. There's only one thing about her character that stuck out to me. Her big, voluptuous, massive... <sighs> Eyes. What? Oh, you thought I meant her tits. And those are the main characters. Well, I guess there's Goat, but we'll get to her in a bit. And honestly, they're not that interesting. There are also, of course, some side characters, such as this grotesque friar, these cruel students, the monster from the honeycomb cereal commercial. <laughs> Seriously, what's up with that guy? Like, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be the mascot of the animation studio, but he serves no purpose in the film. He's just there, creeping in the window with his big masculine thighs. <laughs> so weird. Actually, to be honest, there's a lot of what the hell moments in this film. Skeletons drinking at the bar, headless guys walking around the streets, and the devil playing cards with immortal souls. But does the movie ever explain any of this? No! You just, you wait around thinking it might, but it doesn't. Moving on, like I said, the astronomical clock is a major plot point. There's a guy named Master Hainus who is an actual person from Czech folklore. And, if my sources are correct, this guy is based on actual history too. And Master Hainus here is trying to complete the construction of the clock for the town. Matthew here works under him. But Hainus is kind of, uh, mean to him. Well, Matthew tries to be cool with the other students. He gets tricked by them, he then gets arrested and publicly ridiculed. And then he thinks that Hainus, for some bizarre reason, was the guy behind it all. And then Matthew signs a deal with the devil? Uh, okay. Why? Seriously, this movie has like three separate plot points going on. And they only started to cross over with one another around the 50 minute mark of the film. It is very confusing. Like Jimmy wants to be a sculptor, but then he crushes on the girl character. But then the goat is super jealous of it? Uh, why? Real talk folks, I was wondering whether or not Jimmy and this goat were a thing. Because after a scene like this? Will you marry me? That just wouldn't work out at all. No, not at all. It's because I'm a goat, isn't it? It's because I'm a goat. Well, maybe a little bit. Well, it raises questions. In order to keep things focused, I'm just gonna cut to the chase for the story. Like I could go on and on and on, but it would only make things more confusing. Trust me, this story is a hot mess and it's extremely disjointed. Okay, here we go. Matthew gains powers from the devil. He then frames Hainus and makes the town officials think that Hainus is going to build a clock for these Chinese businessmen, to which, by the way, are portrayed as very racist. They say, we want the clock too, but much, much bigger. Hainus then gets his eyes plucked out. He then sabotages the clock. The girl then gets blamed for some reason. Hainus dies. Jimmy is then told to fix the clock. Then there's a goat and goat story. That doesn't really do anything at all. Matthew then freaks out and runs away. Then big chested girl is going to be hung for presumably breaking the clock. Then the goat dresses up with the conclusion being us assuming the goat is hung in her place. But unfortunately, we're wrong, and the goat survives. 
And that's the movie. Yep. <laughs> right? It doesn't make sense to me either. So what are my overall thoughts about Goat Story? Well, like I said, the narrative is a hot mess. There are way too many things going on, but none of the plot threads are very interesting. If anything, they're confusing, and that confusion only snowballs as the movie goes on. The characters aren't interesting, and the writers don't do a very good job of fleshing things out. The majority of the characters only have a single trait. Goat is jealous, girl is flirty, Jimmy is horny, and that's really about it. Well, okay, Jimmy wants to be a sculptor too. Sculpt that disproportionately crazy body of hers, yeah! <laughs> really though, she's ugly. And then you got Matthew, a guy who feels like he should have been more important than he actually was. If anything, he just sets things into motion, and that's it. Like some invisible hand of God that impacts the rest of the cast. Honestly, I wish this film would have focused more on Master Heinous and Jimmy instead, and just cut Matthew from the film altogether. He wasn't necessary. Neither was the devil, or the honeycomb monster, or the goat. They were only there for fanfare and giggles, and that's it. Now, don't get me wrong. You can have some fun with crazy, fictional characters, but give them some kind of purpose. Don't just throw them into a movie for no reason at all. Like, the devil barely talks. I was sitting there thinking, okay, he's the bad guy, I guess. But not really. He gives Matthew powers and money, but that's it. The devil pieces out after that and never really says or do anything. Again, really weird. The dialogue is awkward, the jokes are flat, the English dub voice acting is even more flat. I mean, let's be real, there's only one thing in this movie that isn't flat. <laughs> the goat utters. What? Proggers. Oh, you thought I meant <laughs> go to church. But really, the only thing this movie had in its corner was the folklore, and funny enough, and in my own personal opinion, the animation. I know, a weird take, but hear me out. This movie takes place during a very unpleasant time during European history. It's during an era of peasants and plagues and, uh, <laughs> I guess to be candid, uh, generally ugly and unhygienic people. No, look at it! Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! In a way, the character designs work in favor of the setting and story. Too bad the plot is confusing and the characters are boring. The only reason I checked out this movie to begin with was because of the bizarre box art. And that's it. Like, I'm a fan of the weird and strange. And this movie definitely has those kinds of vibes. These computer animated caricatures with such extreme body proportions, textures and facial expressions that look ugly but somewhat competent. Hell, even the buildings were somewhat stylized and remind me of the human cities from World of Warcraft in a way. Like, I got a storm wind vibe with how the buildings curve over a bit. Now, gross humor and character designs can be a turnoff for me and many others, especially if they only exist just to be gross. I was wondering if that would be the case for Goat Story, and I had a smidgen of hope when first watching the movie. I was like, okay, these characters are kind of ugly, but they come from an ugly time of history when people were downtrodden and dirty. Hey, this could work. But then the story, the characters, everything else pulled the movie down. It's especially a bummer since this movie is based on some pretty interesting history and folklore from the Czech Republic. Something about Heinous and how the guy wasn't actually the creator of the clock and was instead just an upkeeper. Oh, oh well. 
I guess the entire film seems to be wasted potential. Competent artists who worked hard and showed promise, but had to work on a story that was empty and was poorly executed. So overall, I give Goat Story points for being a novelty from the Czech Republic and also being based on interesting folklore and history. I also give it points for being so bizarre with its character designs and general tone. But the movie loses major points for its confusing story, boring characters, and just generally being sloppy across the board. But that being said, I gotta remind myself every so often that I'm an American and that I've grown up spoiled with Disney and Pixar and a bunch of other animation studios from America. The rest of the world is still catching up, and making an animated movie is no small feat. It has to be very meaningful to non-Americans when their country creates a movie on a theatrical scale. It gives them a sense of pride that they're contributing to the medium in their own unique way. And that definitely feels like the case here for Goat Story. Now, does that mean it's automatically good? Uh, no, but it's worth hearing out. And it's exciting to see animated movies and shows from other countries. I legit think that will be a big theme during the 2020s. Let's see what the rest of the world wants to share with us. But what about Goat Story 2? Yeah, there's a sequel. And I did not see it. <laughs> Cause I don't want to. I mean, have you seen what's on my schedule? <laughs> I gotta save some of my sanity for these upcoming videos. Especially this one. <laughs> Early November is going to suck. So a big shout out to this video's sponsor, ExpressVPN. For way too long, I went without a VPN service, thinking it wasn't necessary. Good God, I was wrong. I know, I know, a bunch of content creators go along with a sponsor, saying that they're awesome, but I mean this. Every person should have a VPN service, and ExpressVPN is the way to go. It's an awesome tool that gives you private and more secure access to the internet. It also allows you to secure a connection and also encrypts your data without slowing down your computer speed. In this day and age, online security and privacy is a must. And this is a smart way to protect yourself. You also get access to server locations in over 90 countries and have full access to a variety of shows and movies that are region locked. As of late, for me, I've been watching Studio Ghibli films with a VPN on Netflix. Plus, ExpressVPN is the number one VPN service rated by Tech Radar. It's very intuitive and works on multiple devices, Windows, Android, iOS, Mac, and many others. For less than $7 a month, you can get the service. Trust me, that is absolutely worth the cost for having this amount of protection and freedom. Again, there's a lot of region lock stuff, such as a variety of anime on Japanese Netflix. But with ExpressVPN, I was able to access it. Super easy stuff. So go to expressvpn.com slash Sabrespark to take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months for free.